in this lecture snippet I'm going to continue looking at an MFT record and more specifically I want to focus in on the standard information attribute that we'll find on this record. Now in the previous video I went ahead and looked at locating the actual MFT record as well as looking at the header information of a file. In this video I want to focus in on the standard information which we can find starting off. Now this offset here is relative to the beginning of the file. So offset and I have hexadecimal 3.9 and it's going to end up being 57 spots over if we look at the decimal. And the reason why it's going to be that in this particular file is because in the header we saw that the size of the header was in hexadecimal 38 or 56 bytes. And so that includes all of the header which is going to be up to right here. Now the next byte over, set of next information over, we're going to find the beginning of our standard information attribute or as I like to call it the 10 attribute and you can see that it begins with the 10. So that's what we're going to be looking for is this 10 to begin this attribute. So, so from now on my offsets that I have listed here are going to be relative to the beginning of this attribute starting with this 10 that we see listed here. So at offset 4 to 5 or 4 to 5 over which is going to be 1, 2, 3 and here's the 4th and here's the 5th. Offset 4 to 5 relative to the beginning of the attribute we're going to find the length of this attribute and you can see that I have a 6000 0, 0, 0, and that is in little endian format so what I will need to do is convert that over to hexadecimal and you can see the hexadecimal value listed right here and if I were to convert that over to decimal that will tell me the actual size of the 10 attribute or the standard information attribute It is going to be 96 bytes in size and so if I were to actually highlight that it would take me down to right there and that is going to be the entire 10 attribute or the standard information attribute that we're going to be looking at. Now a couple things that I want to point out that are significant within this attribute. We will see at offset 18 to 1f or 24 to 31 over and again this is relative to the beginning of the attribute we will find the create time and date of our file and it's in a format called win32 file time format and so I'm going to go ahead and highlight that for you right there so this is going to be 24 to 31 spots over from the beginning of my 10 attribute and you can see that number listed there that is code basically Windows 32 file time format for when this file was actually created following that we're going to see that we've got the last modified time following that we've got a list of values to represent the last time the file was accessed and then the last set that I want to point out is going to be the record update date and time and so this is all code for time and I'm going to show you quickly and give you an estimate now, now this is going to get you a rough estimate just to show you how to convert it over and I, I don't have a format calculator to take this time and actually show it, what today's date and time is but I'll show you roughly how to get an estimate of what this time is now let's go ahead and examine this win32 file time format basically what this is is it keeps track of every 100 nanosecond intervals and what a nanosecond is it's one billionth of a second so every 100 of those it keeps track and basically increments my time by and it's keeping track ever since the time of January 1st 1601 and you can see that there so this format or this information that I have right here 2899 BCF 2100 CE01 I went ahead and listed right here that is little endian format and so I'm going to convert that over to hexadecimal format and you can see I've got the 1C E0021CF9B9028 that's the hexadecimal value of what we see listed there I'm going to convert that hexadecimal over to decimal and you can see that I've got this long string here for decimal now if I want to take this time this 100 nanosecond intervals and actually convert it over to actual seconds then what I'll need to do is divide that number by and you can see here it's 10 million that'll go ahead and take it from 100 nanosecond intervals to second intervals and you can see this is the actual number of seconds it has been since January 1st 1601 and you can see that listed here if I highlight that so I've had quite a few seconds since 1601 now if I divide that by 60 that'll tell me how many minutes it's been since January 1st 1601 and of course if I divide that by 60 I can tell how many hours that's been since 1601 and then of course if I divide that by 24 that'll tell me how many days it's been since that time and then if I divide that by and I just went ahead and used 365.25 that'll tell me how many years it's been since 1601 and if I take 1601 and I add the 402.08 now that's roughly rounded it's going to take me to 2013 and then 0.08 so, so this file was actually created in 
January of 2013 and you can see that this file lines up pretty close to the very beginning of 2013. So that's just a quick simple way to show you how to add it up. Now it's not 100% specific. It hasn't taken into account a lot of factors with time but I wanted to give you a, a rough estimate of how to actually calculate that time. So this is the standard information attribute that we'll find in an MFT record.